Okay, what we have here is a 1992 Coachman Classic RV. Um, we're redoing the roof after years of small leaks, um, re repatching small holes and dealing with you know small leaks year after year. So finally we decided it was time to redo the whole thing. Um, and the moment we tore into this thing, we found that the wood was so damaged that basically everything needed to be rip, ripped out. Uh, we lucked out in areas like this where it it didn't actually go into the walls. Um, it was contained to the ceiling. And if we get back to about here, um, I'm only tearing down to here because the ceiling is still good up in here. But um, I just wanted to make a quick video about how involved this is. Um, it's basically a quarter inch Luan on the bottom, quarter inch Luan on the top and then foam boards in between. Luckily we were able to get uh, each one of these foam panels out. It's going to make reassembling this a lot easier. One thing about this project, um, if you're going to take anything like this on, I really recommend you park your vehicle in the best uh, possible way you can before you get started. I actually had to do some digging and trenching just to get uh, the ground just right. Um, to get this thing next to the porch because with everything that's required to get this job done um, To have to climb up and down ladders every time would have made a horrible project even more horrible So for most of the middle of this video um, This is just gonna be a voiceover because I wasn't able to actually uh, Do any decent commentary while filming these short clips um, I had to edit them down pretty well, but you can see the interior here came out pretty well. Um, I, we used, you know, the Luan as I mentioned, all the way back to that seam. Um, all that Luan slid in above the above the cabinets. Uh, you know, it took a lot of time to to ream everything out to get it so it would slide in that far, but it came out pretty well. Um, all those edges, I mean, they practically don't even need trim or anything, but, uh, we will touch up the interior. Just making my way around here. The insides of those cabinets, uh, the, the inner plates I still have, they'll just be put in afterwards. Uh, the top side of the roof, roof is far more interesting. Um, this is where, you know, the individual foam panels had to be glued down one at a time. And then the top panels had to be glued down on top of them. So you're talking several days of waiting for sealants and contact cements to cure in between applications. Um, carrying heavy bricks on and off the roof on a daily basis. So... Um, it's definitely if several um, intervals of time that are passing between each of these clips. At this point, we finally got it ripped down towards the the rear, which that didn't that didn't occur until really late in the project. All that all that rubber still had to be removed at that point. That was. That was several hours of labor there. Um, this is where things are shaping together and um, everything is done, is ready for rubber to be glued down. Uh, we used Pella window tape and the tar based uh, aluminum tape for the edges and all those seams. We had to really make sure we went over every little every little screw that broke off and, and every possible uh, rough edge. It could puncture that rubber. And here we've actually laid out the rubber um, to get it ready to glue down. We had to make sure that it was set in its final position and then first we glued the front. Okay, the date is November 8th, 2014. Uh, what we have here is a nearly finished product. Um, what remains is the front seam trimming it back, putting the molding back on, sealing it with lap sealant, uh, the rear seam, putting the 
uh, rack back on attaching the ladder um, this whole side the awning has to still go back on all the trim around the one side and then cutting these holes open for the vents and skylights and the refrigerator um, we cut the front and back air conditioner holes just because last week when we rolled this down we needed some heat to get up into this section um, just to aid in the curing because it wasn't still wasn't warm enough um, you know like today's November 8th and it's like 45 degrees out so I've decided that this is it for the year I don't feel comfortable dealing with sealants and adhesives uh, when it's going to be that cold out and I think that this is very well prepped for the winter um, we're going to put pl uh, new plastic down the original tarp down and uh, put a lot of weight on top of it just so that it can't go anywhere tie it down really securely for the winter and even if it does leak I think we're in pretty good shape here um, this project has been overwhelming to say the least I hope it's useful for somebody I hope it doesn't discourage you as much as it's discouraged me hopefully it's actually useful um, in the end I'm glad I did it but it's been a lot a lot of labor so uh, in the end it wound up being around 1500 uh, in materials uh, which actually wasn't bad at all considering how many days I probably have 15 full days of labor uh, from start to finish so um, the one thing is the uh, DAP Weldwood contact cement. We went through probably six gallons of that um, from start to finish, and that stuff is $41, $42 a gallon. So if you take something like this on, you know, just be prepared to spend, you know, I think we spent two, three hundred dollars $300 just in contact cement. So that was a surprising cost right there. But that's that. I'm probably not going to update this video any further just because I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I'm sure you can find other videos that uh, show how to install vents and install air conditioners and seal and cut back and install the trim. So that's not not really the purpose of this. This is just to show, you know, the full full project and what what was involved. So uh, again, I hope it helps somebody and thanks for watching.